What's up, guys? Welcome back to Studio 44. Uh, today, I have a special guest. Super, super excited to talk to my brother uh, from the same mother, uh, Don. Uh, Dom with I Am Atomic TV. Uh, Dom, welcome to the show. Hey, what's good, everybody? How we doing? So, I mean, we got some big news. Like, yeah. over the last couple of days, like, tell tell the people what's brand new. So, the last couple of days have been pretty wild. Um, I was in talks with a esports team slash club um, and just trying to kind of get some things organized. And I did officially get announced uh, yesterday that I will be officially a content creator for Zomblers. Uh, they play uh, semi-professional, almost professional CSGO. Uh, they do Rocket League. Um, they're actually going to be branching out to Apex, which is one of the games I currently play, Call of Duty, everything like that. So it's really, really exciting. They've been in the industry for 15 plus years. So it's really cool to be able to have an opportunity. So it's 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 exciting, man. It's cool. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I know, you know, just being part of a team or being being part of a new squad is a big deal. Uh, so for for you that are watching for the first time. So, uh, Don, tell the people where where were you born? So I'm originally born and I still currently live in Arizona. I originally come from Glendale, Arizona, but now I actually live out in uh, Scottsdale, which is about 20 minutes from where I grew up. So not too bad. So a um, little different uh, heat uh, from Florida to Phoenix. Yes. So, uh, that, that whole area in Arizona is uh, hot. Uh, hot is an understatement. Um, I was recently out there. 114 degrees and they said that's not that's not yep. hot yeah no uh we i think what was it two weeks ago or something like that two two and a half weeks ago we hit like 119 Hi. which is just it's outrageous like it's it's i can't even get into words how insane that is but it's you get used to it i guess yeah 119 is a little brutal uh yeah. like it it gets like 91 92 and we're like we're changing shirts three times a day because of the humidity out yeah. there 114 119 you're just like i don't know like hell opened its door yeah you're uh, just boiling that's, exactly. that's that's the best way to word it you're just yeah. boiling you kind of feel like you're cooking from the inside out yep so uh it is what it is but so born in glendale yes what was it like growing up like in in that area um i mean overall like it was it was pretty chill. I mean, like I growing up for me, I was I was definitely more kind of like the the quiet, kind of shy, nerdy kid. Um, I only had like a little small, tight knit group of friends. Um, definitely wasn't the popular guy. Uh, it was predominantly me and my dad. Um, my dad would be working a bunch and then my grandma would be, you know, in the picture to be you know helping take care of me, things like that. And always be looking out for me, take me to school, pick me up because my dad was working construction. So, you know, he'd get up early in the morning and then he wouldn't get out until you know, four or five in the afternoon. I get out of school at like three, three thirty. So she'd come pick me up, you know, she'd be making dinner, stuff like that. So that, uh, the home life was, it was good. You know, was, I'm always really appreciative for it. Um, school was chill. So yeah. too bad. So very similar story over here. Um, my dad worked, uh, at a local, uh, rubber hose plant for like 14 years. And, yeah. um, my grandmother actually, uh, helped raise me quite a bit and um, kind of picked up the slack. Um, he worked almost 16 hours a day. So yeah, I, I get that feeling like they go to work before it's dark. They get home when it's dark. Yeah, so, exactly. A lot, of, a lot of those days I get it. Um, so tell me something out of like just out of high school. Like what did you what did you want to be? What did you want to do? So initially when i got out of high school um uh, the first thing was hey let's go to college you know let's go to college and let's get some type of degree um i didn't really know where i wanted to kind of range from and so i was thinking ah, maybe i'll just get a business degree like a lot of people do and just have a relative generalness to it so then i can kind of go into different fields and i i went to gcc which is glendale community college um and i actually uh i actually ended up dropping out um I just, for me personally, I'm a very hands-on individual and that's how I learn and that's how I feel that I grow more. And if there's information that I'm taking in that I don't see myself applying in my actual real personal life, mm -hmm. I didn't really see the need for it because I look at it more constructively. So I actually ended up dropping out and that was around that time that I had a discussion with my dad and was like, okay, like college isn't really working. 
what am I going to do next? And that was actually, uh, there was talks of military. Um, I actually went and I applied for the air force. I went to enlist for the air force and unfortunately I had some health, uh, previous incidents that had kind of come up. Um, and so what it's, it's a terminology. It's like they pretty much, they flag your paperwork. So it's like, Hey, you can't progress until this gets either disproven or proven that you're fine. And so I went and did everything like that. And unfortunately it wasn't really working out. And my dad knew somebody in the army who was like an E nine, which at that point in your career as an E nine, you're pretty much getting ready to retire. You got a couple of years left. And so he was finishing off as a recruiter tried getting me in my paperwork was still flagged either way like across the military branches and so that didn't work out Uh, I ended up going back to college though right afterward uh, they actually kind of made me figure out what I wanted to do which was Mm -hmm. interesting Um, because I was I wanted to go in the military I wanted to do drone piloting I thought that would have been super cool uh, just to be able to do something like that yeah but in that same technological field I actually ended up going to DeVry University which is it's worldwide Um, it's like across the country yeah yeah but um, I ended up doing that. It was all online. Um, I actually did the accelerated program. I actually went and did a year and four months and got my entire associate's degree done. I almost finished off with a 4.0 GPA. Um, and so I got that in information technology and networking. So like a lot of like IT work, stuff like that. Very cool. I think it's interesting how like it doesn't always happen a plan, right? It doesn't, mm-hmm. it doesn't always go the exact way that you thought was the right way. But... Right when you think about your life now and the trajectory that you're on any one of those things, even like, let's say that you would have gotten accepted to the air force immediately. Right. Life's different. Oh, every bit of it, everything in your life from this, from that point to now takes a different trajectory. So exactly. It makes me think that, um, and I, and I fully believe this, that, that our, our path is written. It's already like, we're just going into, what is meant for us in this life. So I think it's really, really cool to see that, um, you wanted to get a business degree. Um, I got mine in, in marketing and advertising, uh, and realized very quickly that school was not for me. And it is first for, it's for a lot of people. I get it. Uh, there's people out there like we need people that have, uh, major degrees and masters and PhDs and doctorates and all that stuff. Not, not me. You know what I mean? Like I, I knew the path that I I wanted to go on. Um, it's not exactly like I thought I was going to be an architect, um, for the longest time. I wanted to design, uh, custom kitchens and bathrooms. Uh, I didn't even want to do whole buildings. That's I, I love, uh, modern conveniences integrated into those spaces. So, and, and now I, I get to do what I love to do in so many other ways. So I get it. It's, it's good to, good to hear the, the, that you're in the right place doing the right thing. Absolutely. Now let's talk about when did gaming at this level come into your life? So let's see, I'm 26, almost 27 now. So I didn't really even look at competitive gaming. Probably honestly, probably like at least eight, nine years ago, like give or take. Um, Cause it really wasn't, much of a thing you know if you look back at esports or anything like that because that's really the terminology for it now you know that actually wasn't really a very popular thing here in the states um it's actually more of a thing that was popular in japan or in europe and things like that and now it's actually become significantly more mainstreamed over here and so over the last i'd probably say last decade esports is significantly grown to where now there's there's a team that's out in la you know i mean there's la thieves they do competitive call of duty There's Optic Gaming, who has been known for years through the Halo community, Call of Duty community, things like that. They have an operation down in Texas. Um, There's a lot of stuff. I mean, I even think uh, I think they're the Florida Mutineers. They they actually are your competitive Call of Duty team for Florida, like their professional team. So there's a lot of that that's significantly grown because I think the last time they did the statistics, the entire esports just in the U.S. alone is a multi multi billion dollar industry that is now finally become actually open and kind of more to light if that makes sense and i think now more people are kind of looking into that and wanting to maybe get into that space isn't it interesting you know just a matter of years ago that this wouldn't have even been a career path like people 
you, you couldn't actually not for real, for real, make money uh, playing some of your favorite games and really, really Correct. honing your craft. Like I am a, uh, a massive proponent of racing simulators. Um, looking into a new rig right now. Absolutely. <laughs> Shout out to rig for that headset. Uh, but uh, I'm looking to, to buy a new rig to where I can race GT cars and then also have it convert down to F1 style cars. Nice. That's awesome. And I I saw that Gran Turismo is now uh, being inducted as an Olympic sport. Wow, a, I didn't know that. There's That's an incredible. esports category for it. Uh, they did their qualifying, I believe, a month and a half ago. And it's just amazing to see how, how esports in general um, has grown and right. has elevated to the, the levels that it's going today. Now... A lot of what you play, first person shooter, et cetera, right? Yes. Have you converted that to the paintball field? I have not. Um, there's not really, I think, just directly with the overall heat of this state. Um, yeah. There's not really like a lot of paintball places here, at least that the I've paintball seen. Would dry. Yeah, the it's the moment like I shoot it, it would turn into rocks. <laughs> exactly. It would just dry so quick. Um, You'd hit somebody with a sheet of paper. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, I I would love to go paintballing. Like yeah, that, that's that's definitely one thing that I would really enjoy doing. I mean, I I mean, I used to have a couple different guns and everything, so I, I would usually go to the gun range and I would check. And so, yes, that hand eye coordination does actually correspond uh, to my my real life aim, yeah. um, if you will. Um, and I, I would love to be able to to get into. It. I mean, hell, I I played Nerf and all that as a kid. I've mm -hmm. always been interested in. You know, and that military kind of style, weaponry, tactics, aim, everything. Like I've I've broken a lot of that down to a science, you know, for my personal applications. So it's just it's it's always something I've really just been interested in. So um here in Florida we have a seventy acre paintball field right in my town. And they play twenty four hour scenarios. You have generals, you have orders, you have um squads that go out um all night long like from 12 to 12 like it is that's it's awesome so much that's fun. cool like um, that really is that's super so awesome. you're gonna need to make a florida trip um i, we have, I would we have love to extra paintball markers we got extra gear but oh. i'm telling you like i i may not be able to beat you at apex legends but i will gog people in the face they will not be able to see hey. Say less. It, yes, it's it's gonna be fun. We'll get we'll get an entire group together. Um, I I also got to be careful. Like, do you do you ever experience this in in esports to where there's just some people, especially friends, some friends you cannot play with? Um, oh, absolutely. Because I'm gonna tell you a story in paintball, and then I want to hear it uh, when it comes to either Apex or Call of Duty. But of at the paintball field. Um, me and my friend Lance used to go and I mean, we're, we're great friends, but we get on the paintball field and we are ultra, ultra competitive. So we would be out there and we'd play on the same team, but then a lot of times they'd see our gear, they'd see our markers and they'd be like, no, 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 we got to split those guys up. They're too good. We were literally that game army of two. Like that yeah, was us. I love that game, yeah. man. That, that was, that was Lance and me. So we get in there and wreck things up and then they would split us up. And once they split us up nine times out of 10, we were the last two standing and then yeah. we had to go head to head. And every time we went head to head, it was, I mean, we're talking 19 balls per second, 250 <laughs> rounds per hopper. We're talking about unloading four hoppers on each other. Okay. Damn. Like extreme, extreme. And when, when we would shoot each other, like when we would get to that point, we would not talk for like three days. <laughs> like yeah. they would just, we would be so hot and so, so mad um, because we just, we would just want to execute. Does right. that ever happen in, in gaming and esports with you? Oh, of course. Absolutely. I mean, like you, you kind of hit it, you know, nail on the head, if you will. Um, I'm incredibly hyper competitive. I mean, I get that from my dad. Like my, my dad's raced dirt bikes for literally the entirety of his life and still continues to to this day my dad's 56 and still goes out and rides and still beats guys my age because he has like that level of you know competitiveness so yeah oh no absolutely like when when i'm in apex 
I got a lot of people that like I've met over you know these last now four years that this game has been out, and I love everybody to death. But I know for a fact that there's some people that don't have like that competitiveness to them. Like they're just like, hey, I just want to chill. I just want to play. And I can do that, but it's hard because I'm already wired in a type of way to where it's I just want to be the best in every single situation. Yeah. Constantly. Um, and that's in any game I play. I, I play Apex. Heck, I'll play you in chess or in checkers, and I'll yes. still like want to be squaring off as best as possible. So that's like that, right. that's it's it's always gonna be a thing. I think in any form of sport or any form of activity to where there's gonna be just a little bit of competitiveness. I think that's just, it's a guarantee. It's, it's just going to happen no matter what. Somebody asked me the other day because uh, we own Pop City Pickleball and we were having a shootout and they needed an extra player. And I was like, oh, yes, I'm in. Um, so I come in. My, my player, a great guy, did a good job. Um, my, my teammate, it was a random draw. You had no clue who you were playing with. You had yeah. no clue their skill set. Um, so we got out there and we just got after it like two v two v two and it got to a point where i have a very hard time just playing for fun yes like i and it doesn't matter who's against me like it could be a 70 year old like with double knee implants like across from me i'm gonna try to slam this ball down their throat um i i some of my friends the same way like i i get like in the very beginning we're just kind of hitting back and forth as soon yeah. as it's game on and we have points on the board like it's that hot. winning attitude i promise you it's in our blood um yeah. it has to be there like the ball gets popped up i'm slamming it that's that's my only uh you know yeah. i am not six five i'm not going to be you know dunking a basketball i'm not going to be able to to spike a volleyball at the beach like I want to. Right. But in pickleball, like I'm going to make uh, somebody eat their lunch. It's going to be bad. That's awesome. So what do you do outside of gaming, outside of work, to just chill? Um, Honestly, the two biggest things. Actually, I'd probably say three biggest things um, in no particular order, if you will. Um, going to the gym. Going to the gym, is, it's definitely... You know, what I mean, it sounds very cliche, like, but it really is that place where, you know, not only for me do I always feel that's a judgment free zone, but at the same time, I know I can just go and I can just put my music on. And I can just kind of zone out and just decompress because if I had a long day at work or if I was in a competition or anything like that, then obviously you know, tensions can be high. So yeah. it's great to unwind that way. Um, another way, and it's personally for me um, because I don't know how many people have done it as well. Um, I did martial arts for a really long time as a kid. And so one thing that my my instructor always taught me was breathing techniques and also Tai Chi um, and just meditation overall, um, just to be able to remain a lot more calm. I mean, even in situations where I'm in tournaments that could be X amount of money that I'm playing for, most of the time I stay very calm because I kind of put myself into that zone because yeah. if I know if I elevate to a certain extent that I'm going to fumble and if I fumble, that's a problem. Yeah. Um, and then the number one thing, which I actually will say is, is just spending time with my girl, you know, spend time with my girl and my dog and just sitting back watching a movie, having some snacks, you know, and just, just really just not even thinking about anything else that I had going that day and just focusing, you know, on her and, and, things like that. So being able to relax like that is so key. Like when you, when you either live a life that it is competitive or you're competing all the time, like you've got to find those little nuggets, those little ways to just relax and chill because you cannot, you can't stay on go. Right. Like you, I mean, you can for a while, you can, you can drink all the energy drinks you want, but you're going to get to this point where it's like, the body just starts crashing. You've got your focus starts letting go. So in competitive gaming, I would imagine like finding that, that balance between the, the on the spot got to be ready, locked and loaded all the way down to the point where it's just like, I, I just want to, we'll just sit and watch mindless television. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I, I'll, I'll throw on uh, some family guy and just veg out for a little while. Like right. whatever, whatever it takes to just disconnect for a while. 
Um, so we're gonna we're gonna end this with uh, a round robin of questions. Okay, right. rapid fire as close to single answer as possible. Okay. Um, favorite movie? Oh, three hundred. <laughs> yes, this is Sparta. It's always the greatest movie of all time. Great movie. Uh, favorite type of music? Uh, rock, like '90s to 2000s grunge. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so then favorite '90s band? That's a rough one. That is a rough one. I don't. I don't got one right on the spot. So let's go. Let's go. Nirvana or Bush? Nirvana. Good answer. Um, do you have a favorite book? Uh, no, I don't actually. Yeah, me neither. Um, I I watch. I don't read. I, I, I used to bad. read a lot. Yeah. Um, and I just. I completely lost that like feeling um, for that. Favorite game system. GameCube. GameCube. Yeah, wow. GameCube. That's yeah. a first. That's a first. GameCube or Game Boy Advance. Okay. Like, that, gotcha. That's just how I started. So favorite video game. Of all time. Ooh, retro uh, retro first. Retro first. Yeah. Probably probably Sonic. Sonic. Nice. Yeah. Very good. And then uh favorite game of now. Oh, The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3. Absolutely. Very cool. Why? Uh it's the level of immersiveness, the amount of hours that you can put into it. It's not linear. You can do pretty much any type of way you want to go. You don't even have to complete the campaign if you don't want to. You could just be doing side quests and just missions and everything like that. There's a lot of just different paths you can take. That's awesome. I used to like Fable. Fable, yeah, one. it's think of like Fable, but like on steroids. Pretty yeah, much. way cooler, way cooler. Ah. Um, Apple or Android? Apple. Good man. Um, favorite car? Ooh, uh, '69 Dodge Charger, all black. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice black interior, also. Uh, yeah. Nice. Uh, favorite. Uh, let's go. If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? Uh, Italy. Why? Uh, not only do I love the, the food and the culture, um, but just to be able to go to somewhere completely different where the way of life is significantly different from like how we are and where it really is more family oriented, um, just across the board. Awesome. If you could meet anyone past or present celebrity wise or inventor, or what past or present, who would you, if you had 15 minutes, who would you meet? I have two, Gordon yeah. Ramsay and Denzel Washington. Okay, give us wise on both. Uh, Gordon Ramsay, just to be able to just to pick his brain in regards to not only food, but also business as well, and just see how he's able to maintain an entire empire like that. Um, and then pretty much same thing with Denzel, just to see like how his mindset goes into not only being able to go into movies and shows and everything like that, but just how he also deals with like a day-to-day -day life um, on top of being like the level that he is and how like, he stays awesome. calm. Great answers. Great answers. Um, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to come on the show today. Of course. Um, absolutely. I'm happy to be here, man. And thank then you again. I, I want to give you a, a chance to plug. What do you got going on? Uh, shout outs to the team. Shout outs to sponsors. I know you got some amazing people that sponsor your stuff. So I want to give you a second for that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, right now... You know, we're just we're just grinding. We're grinding for content, things like that. I'm always going to be live. Uh, I predominantly always make TikTok content, Twitch content, um, even live on Twitter, things like that. So anything when you look up I am Atomic uh, TV, so look up I am Atomic TV, or if you go on to Twitch, it's I am Atomic TTV just for Twitch TV. Um, always check that out because I'm live pretty much every single day. Um, we're always vibing, playing different types of games. Um, if I'm in a tournament, I'm always plugging that on Instagram as well. I have all my socials, all my links on my Instagram. It's an entire link profile. Pulls up everything. Easy easy access. Um, major shout out also to Zomblers. Um, they're an incredibly amazing team and an amazing uh, set of people who are really supportive for the goals that I have and the goals in general for the team. So I'm really excited to get to work with that. Got some, some things in the works that I'm not allowed to say. Um, 
also major shout out to my headset company uh, rig uh, we do have something that's going to be actually coming out at the end of the month um, that i'm not allowed to talk about so definitely check it out on social media um, when i start giving a little bit of hints um, but it should be about that middle of september time that you're going to start seeing something really cool coming out um, it's a lot different than what they've been doing so i'm really excited for that and then uh, nacon also who is a controller company who is actually partnered with rig uh, they have a phenomenal a uh, team out there who makes probably the best controllers in the game. And I'm really excited to be able to test those out and uh, get my hands on one as well. That's awesome. Um, well, once again, it was great talking with you, man. I'm excited for you. Proud of you. Uh, glad to see the, uh, the new team um, and, and just can't wait to see what's next. So awesome. Thank you. I hope you have a good day. Um, and if you're watching, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, click the bell for those notifications and have a great day. And remember love wins period. Hey.